Hi, and welcome to the Giving Flower Podcast. My name is Kimberly, or Kimber Lolly on Ravelry. Um, Kimber Lolly twenty nine on Instagram. Come and befriend me on Instagram. And um, Kimber Lolly on Ravelry. I have a podcast group if you'd like to join. Um, there's not a whole heck of a lot going on, but it's kind of fun. So if you want to join that, it's the Giving Flower Podcast group, and I also have one for my designs. So, hi. Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome to new viewers. Thanks for coming by, spending your time with me today. I am in the backyard because it's still quite nice out here. Um, I'm wearing my windows, window to my soul, sweater, short sleeve sweater, because it's really quite nice. It's been raining all morning, so I've been waiting to come out here for quite a while, and um, it's finally stopped. So here we are. I didn't want to go inside to, to podcast, so we're out here. It's kind of a bit overcast, but it's quite nice. And um, my neighbor was out because we have moles in the yard, and they are driving me nuts. They are everywhere. I don't know how to get rid of them. I have tried everything to get rid of the moles. I now have bottles, beer bottles in my yard, which I did last fall to try to get rid of them. And um, it looks like we drink a lot because there's a ton of beer bottles sticking out of the ground. Apparently beer bottles are supposed to keep them away. The wind blows and the the air, the, the noise goes down through the tunnels and they don't like that. They don't like loud noise. Moles are protected by law here in Germany. You are not allowed to kill them. Not psyched on my part. I don't want to kill them. I just don't want them in my yard. Everything I have tried has not gotten rid of them. Well, my neighbor now has them. And because they don't like loud noise, she comes out daily <laughs> and hammers on metal rods that she's stuck in the ground and she'll hammer on them to scare them away. And just as I sat down to do this, she came out. So, but she's wonderful. And um, uh, so it's no big deal. So you might hear her pounding away. It's all good. It's nature. It's, it's life. I have three new, new mounds behind me that I need to take care of. What I do is I, flat, I dig them out so I find the hole and then I, I stuff them with dirt and try to stomp them down a bit. And I have some, these little pellets that apparently stink and they don't like the smell. Well, that doesn't work because they just push them right back out again. But I'm still trying. I'm still putting those in. I have a, uh, a rather expensive toy. Um, it makes noises in the ground and I've pushed that in the ground twice in two different places to see if that would get rid of them. They just build around it. They build hills around it. And people say, so what? A mole? Who cares? It's nature. It's not so what because when you're walking it's dangerous because when you're walking through the yard there's divots now everywhere because they've dug up the ground underneath. So you're walking around and you can you can really hurt yourself if you're walking in the yard. It's not funny and it is not fun. And this is why it's bothering me. If it were just, you know, wasn't going to hurt anybody, wasn't going to do anything, I wouldn't have a problem. But it is driving me crazy because I can't get rid of them. I just don't want them in my yard. They can live elsewhere, but not on my yard. I'm sorry, the, the, the door is closed and it seems like the cat is trying to get out, which she never does. Could be, could be, uh... oh, I should show you my neighbor. She's so funny. She's trying to find the hole. Did you find any? Hast du mehr gefunden? Oh, okay. Okay. Sehr schön. She's um, she has a bush that has to be held together. So she and her husband are going to come out and do that. That's what she was talking about. But she's she's underneath the bush. I don't think she knows I'm podcasting. <laughs> so anyway, I don't want to get her on. So I don't think she'd be too psyched. So anyway, um, uh, so that's a story with <laughs> what's going on in my life. It has been a very busy two weeks. Um, as I talked about last time, I went to Hamburg with my good friends from um, Yarn Over Berlin, and I helped at their stand at the Hamburg Wohlfest. I met a ton of fun people, wonderful people. I'm so glad I went. It was a great time. Um, they sold a ton of yarn, and I didn't buy any, which I'm very proud of myself. I bought yarn. I bought stuff trust me, but not from them, um, because I can get that all the time, and I do. So I was very good. Um, I wanted other people to get the goodies from them, but I did buy some other stuff, and I will show you that in a bit. Um, I have a few things finished. I did not knit much in the last two weeks. 
I did a bit of spinning, but not much knitting because I've also been sick. And today is the first day where I really feel good again. I had Saturday and Sunday at the Wool Fest. In fact, we can talk about that a little bit first. Um, at the Wool Fest, it was hot and muggy. And I think it was the hotty, hottiest, hottest and muggiest days of the summer. And we were inside this, what was it? It was like a, um, a men, not a Mensa, and that's German. It's, it was a, from the university, I believe. And it was a big, a big hall. And there was a glass front. So it was super hot. And the, the sun was beaming in. And then it started raining. That's how muggy it was. It was very humid. In the, and it started raining in the afternoon on Saturday. And on Sunday, I believe it rained all day. I'm not sure. I, we were super busy. Saturday was crazy busy. Um, and, but it was really neat. It was a lot of fun. Um, we took turns because there were five of us at our stand. So we could leave three and two of us could go off and do stuff and then come back. And the next, it was really cool. Oh, I want to do it again with them. It was fun, fun, fun. And we stayed in an apartment. Um, I stayed with Gisela, she's my bud, and Connie, and um, Marianne and Steffi, of course, from Yarn Over Berlin, and um, yeah, and me, so it was five of us. And what else? I met a ton of people. Hi, Cleo, and Distelflieger is a German podcaster who I met, and um, <laughs> very, very nice, and I talked to her a little bit, not too much. I've never watched or never listened to her podcast. I'm going to. I have yet to do that. Um, as soon as my my MP3 player I listen to when I'm doing housework or running, it's full right now. And as soon as the batteries are empty, I plug it in and then I put more podcasts on that I can listen to. So right now I'm just listening to the ones that are on there. And as soon as that's done, I will go and listen to and download Distofliga. I can't wait to hear her. So I'm at her... Oh, there's so many people. Stephen West was there. If you're on my Instagram, you'll see. Stephen West and I did some fun pictures. He is fun. He's the nicest guy. He is just an easy person. He reminds me of my brother. My brother is also very, very easy and down to earth. And and that's Stephen West. He's not, he's not, it's weird. He's just, he's just a nice person. Um, he's not stuck up, although he very well could be. He is um, just a very easy person to say hi to and be goofy with. So I got some pictures with him. I saw Isolde Teague. I asked her for a picture. Um, I didn't really talk to her much. I didn't want to bug her. I just wanted a picture with her. <laughs> and um, who else was there? Who else did I get? Oh, quite a few people. Um, I can't think of anybody, but I will think of them. And uh, some people from Instagram that I've met and haven't talked to or have never met before. Um, yeah, it was really quite fun. So if you want to see any of those pictures, go to my Instagram. It's Kimberlolly29. That's me. Um, uh, I'm private just because I don't want my students and everybody seeing my Instagram. Not that I have anything of any importance, but um, I didn't want my students. I just, I, I want knitters in my Instagram. And um, some, I have a colleague, but he's great. <laughs> he's totally cool. So he's, he's on my Instagram. But other than that, I'm, I kind of keep it to knitters. So... Ask and I, if you have knitting in your um, description, I will grab you. So, and I usually follow you back because I do love to see what everyone's doing. Um, I always think it's a give and take. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so at Hamburg, you know me and tangents. I go off on tangents because I do love my tangents. Let's get back to Hamburg. What did I get at Hamburg? In At Hamburg. In Hamburg. First of all, um... Cleo was working the Volmeiser stand, and if you wanted to get anything at Volmeiser, you had to wait for half an hour in line. And obviously I couldn't on Saturday. I was too busy. I didn't get away from the stand. So on Sunday morning, we got there a little bit early, and they allowed us, because Cleo was working the Volmeiser stand. Thank you, babe. Um, I... Um, we were allowed to look and see, and I just wanted one thing from Volmeiser, because I have enough. I have enough everything, really. I don't need a thing. But I did want one thing, and I have a Nuvum in this. And Steffi had gotten me my Nuvum Volmeiser years ago. It's my favorite. It's my favorite color. And I wanted another one just so that I had it for the next thing that I make. It's not going to be a Nuvum, but it is um, Volmeiser Lace. Had to have it. 
and they had three, which I was totally psyched about, so I got the one with the most yardage. It has 323 meters in Hortensia, which is hydrangea. So this is my blue. It's like a purpley blue. Totally love it. Love this color. So I got one of these on Sunday earlier because we had a little access. And um, what else did I get? We were next to a really nice stand with two very nice women. And their yarns were just very pretty. <laughs> and I kept looking over as I was selling. I kept looking over and going, ooh, that's pretty. And ooh, that's... I could have bought so many just because they were pretty. Um, and so I bought two. Um, they were they the Wolkenschaf. Wolkenschaf, which is... Um, um, Wolken are clouds and Schaf is sheep. So there you have it. And this is Sock Yarn Classic. And they have the cutest tags. It's 75% wool. 25% polyamide, and these are my colors. Can you see? My colors, my colors. We have some turquoise and purples and yellow. Just, the yellow is not really mine, but I love it. I love the combination of all this. So I bought this. It wasn't super expensive. They're very, 10 euros for this. 10 euros. So I thought, oh, these will make great little summer socks. So I got that, and then of course I saw these colors. And Gisela and I, Gisela, okay, I wore my window, I call it windows, but it's window to my soul, but I call it windows. I wore my windows on Saturday, and Gisela and I went shopping. And this, I'm purple, I'm a purple person. Gisela is a bright green chartreuse person. And I saw this skein and thought of, you know, because I love my friends. My friends are everything, and I thought, this is my skein. It is me and Gisela, or Gisela and me. So, here we have Gisela and me. And this is her color, absolutely her color. And this is absolutely my color. It's kind of a purpley blue with white speckles in between. And I thought, ooh, this is so pretty. Had to have this one as well. And once again, this is sock yarn, your classic sock yarn. About that. So, and then Gisela and I went for a walk. <laughs> and we got stuck at the Dye for Yarn, the Dye for Yarn store stand. Um, and they have gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. It's a German, German, two German dyers. They're really cute, too. They're adorable, the two of them. And um, I have a thing for silk, kind of on my silk trip. And I saw this color, and I felt it, and said, oh, I had to have it. And the funny thing is, it matched what I was wearing. <laughs> it is 100% silk, let me tell you. 100% silk, mulberry silk. In lace weight, it's 750 meters for 100 grams, and yeah, mulberry, mulberry Ida, withering bluebell is what it's called. So it's a purpley blue, of course, as always, as I am. Love it. I think it's so pretty. And this is dye for yarn. Dye for yarn has some gorgeous things. If you're here in Germany, this is a great company. Company, great dyers. Indigo in dyers. They're great. Just do it. Yeah. And then, across the way from us, was a, and I guess it was Bilum. I guess that's, that's their name. Um, I saw this and, of course, had to have it. Because if you look at that turquoise, so my color. Had to have these beauties. And this is, once again, 100% silk. This is 800 meters for 100 grams. And it just says hand wash. It doesn't say what it is. It's Traumseide. It's Citron Traumseide. Um, apparently you can just buy this and, and dye it yourself, but I love it. And this, I don't know how you, what you call it in English, it's a Farbverlauf is what you call it in German, where um, you have big blocks of each color, and that's what this is going to be. It's not going to stripe, but it's going to be a big block of each color. So they all come, which I think is going to be fun. See what I'm going to make with that. And this is from this company. Company, people, dyers, Bilum. So we have some, we have some gorgeous dyers here. I tell you. And then, one more thing that I got, and I was walking around, and I saw this. Okay, and I thought, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I saw a silk shawl. It's a triangle shawl. It was really pretty, and it was gorgeous, and it was 100% silk. It had beads in it, and I thought, ooh, that is so pretty. Well, it was this. It's in another Fab Falof. It's another color block um, shawl. And um, she had them packed like this, so they didn't look like much. But when you take it out, sorry, it's crinkly, but that's it. 
there they are. There are the colors. And you can't see them all that great. In fact, I'm going to knit this up. I have an idea for this. Um, so I'm going to start with the light blue first. So I'm going to have to rewind this baby. But it's nice and compact. And this is, once again, mulberry si um, silk. 100%, 750 meters for 100 grams, and it's Maharaja, Maharaja? I don't know. I'm going to show this to you. I didn't even know. I had her, her card, but I can't find it anymore. If I find it, I'll show you, but this is it, if you can read that. So, yeah, it wasn't cheap, but I loved it, and I thought this is going to make a gorgeous shawl. So, I bought that. I'm a blue-purple person. What can I say? And I put them all in my yarn over Berlin bag. Look at these cool bags that they were given out. I stole it, but they know I stole it, so it's okay. Um, if you bought anything, you got a bag. How cool. Aren't they great? They're little backpacks. So cool. So go visit them over at Yarn Over Berlin. Online. D-E. Yarn Over Berlin D-E. Good stuff. They're my sponsors. They don't know it, but they are. So, that was my haul. I had one more thing that I bought there. Um, I was selling bags and I sold a couple, so I did a little swapping of the bags for yarn and that kind of thing. So I was able to buy a few things, which was quite nice. And another thing that I bought, and I have to find it, I'm not sure which bag it's in, I think this one. Um, because I've already started, yes, this is it, and I bought, from Salba Visa is the name of the store, the um, online store, where I bought this, where they had their booth, and I bought more signature needles. I bought a round needle, and this was not that expensive. They were 44 euros for the cord and the needle, and I got a 120 centimeter cord, and I've already started something. This isn't a design. Um, we'll see if it turns out, who knows. But I've already started. It's using sock yarn and this, and I bought a 3.25 needle. So I'm slowly collecting my needles. So I bought that as well. Yeah, and this is this is a design I'm using. I'm just using, and I love this stuff. I made a skirt in this once. It's Regia um, silk in white, because I do like my white. And then I'm using various sock yarns to go with it. So it's gonna be pretty, I hope. It's something that I want. So, started that, and it's slow going. Right now, I just kind of want to knit other people's stuff. Kind of tired of knitting my own, although, now we're on to my works in progress. I will show you, this is another one of my own. This is my um, wave sock pattern. And this is the toe-up version, and I am testing the pattern right now to see how I like it, and if I can publish it, if I can put it out. If you've already bought the pattern, you get the top, um, top down, two versions, large, medium and large, and you also get the toe up as well. And um, I'm, like I said, I'm just testing it right now to see, and hopefully I'll finish that this week. It's going really well, and I'm using my signatures that I bought. These are 2.25, which is what I knit all my socks on now, um, except sport weight socks. But for my fingering weight socks, this is what I use. And I'm using Nicole's yarn. As you can see, it is so pretty. Look at those colors, those stripes. Oh, so pretty. It's blues, blue, purples, and greens. So I'm loving this. So this is something I'm working on. I did this today, and I kind of like how it's turning out. I certainly would hope. So that's what I'm working on. And let's see what else I'm working on. Um, I brought a bunch of stuff with me to work on on the weekend in Hamburg, but... I didn't knit much at all. In fact, my Hitofude, my purple Hitofude, didn't, has not gotten much love. My Wednesday knit nights, this is what I take because it's pretty mindless. Um, so this is how far I've gotten, if you want to see. This is, I am using, once again, Nicole C. Mendez. I know if you watch me, you know exactly who I'm talking about. She has an Etsy shop. She, ha she has um, a lot of um, hand dyed yarn and fiber and this is one that she dyed up for me in lavender and merino silk half and half. I've knit my Juno with hers in a really pretty purple that I really like so I asked her to do it again and, and send me more 
for my Hitofude because I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to drape so nicely. So this is how far I've gotten. I think I need 13 repeats of this pattern, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm on my eighth, pa eight, eighth repeat, so it's going well. Someone asked if it was difficult. I, it's hard for me to say what's difficult because a lot of people say my patterns I design are difficult, um, but... I, I don't think this one's difficult at all. Like I said, this is my mindless knitting. And so far, it's really easy. I can't wait to see how far it goes. Maria, in my Wednesday night knitting group, she is knitting it as well. She's much further along because she doesn't do 50 other things. <laughs> she sticks to one. Um, she's, she's a lot further than I am. And uh, she's already started um, the body. So we'll see. She's going to beat me. But... This is what I'm going to try to work on this week. We'll see how far I get. Um, and it's funny because I'm using all my signatures. I now have three sets. I'm kind of psyched. I'm getting quite a few signature needles sets. So, And ah, my Halloween bag I made. This was my Halloween bag last year. I made witch socks, witch knee highs, and they were in this. And so I've taken it out because I love Halloween. So this is my Halloween bag. Um... What else have I worked on? My blanket. And I'm just going to show you stuff that I've been working on. I have other stuff, but I'm just going to show you when I'm in the mood to show you what I've been doing. And here she is. And once again, my signatures. I have, I bought these especially for the blanket. They're 2.75s and they're straight, little straight needles. And they're fun because they're perfect for this blanket. Very, very good for this blanket. And... Here she is. This is how far I've gotten. I've added these three squares. They're really pretty. Um, this purple and turquoise and this pink one were new this week. Um, and this was just, this is a Frankenstein square. I've just used a couple different ones that I had. And here she is. She's getting bigger and bigger. I have, oh, here's the turquoise. And the pink. And this is so cute. You've got to see this. This is Regia. Fiefedig for ply color, and it's Flussi the Sock Monster. Flussi uh, the Sock Monster color. Too cute. So I had to knit that into it. Of course. And I bought this color when I was shopping this week. Um, this is Lana Grossa, Mile Invite, and it's called Aloha. Um, look at those colors. Aren't they pretty? So. I'm going to be knitting this square into it, and then um, I send Nicole 10 grams. Every time I knit from a new skein, I send her some, so she'll get some of that as soon as I'm done. She's got the other two are set aside, and she'll get a little package, and here she is. And what I do is I, I knit them, and I've got, I've got how I do it on my, in my Ravelry notes so you can see, but I, I think I, how many, um, 42 stitches? And I knit two together, and then there's a stitch marker, and then I knit two together through the back loop. Instead of having the three in the middle, the big lump, I like to have the two on either side of the stitch marker. And what I do is I have a little uh, locking stitch marker on here. And then I put my stitch marker on that to hold it a while um, until I start my next um, square. So that's kind of what I do to keep it safe so it doesn't get lost and that way I always have my stitch marker. I've, I haven't started the next square yet. I've got to start it up here. I like to kind of go up one side and um, and then go up the other side and just keep going like that so it's a square the whole time and it's just, I love it. Great, great, great. So that's, those are the things that I've been working on the last couple days. When I was sick I did not knit a, a stitch. I stayed home from school this week because I had a migraine which lasted two days. I've never had that before, but it did. It lasted two days. Um, after the second day of triptons, it went away. So the third day I could go back to work. So Thursday I went back to work. And, um, but I did get a little bit of spinning done. And this is Polworth. This was 100% Polworth. I bought this from Nicole again a while ago. Oh, it smells so good. Um, I used Tuft soap for this. I bought the sampler um, because I love lavender and I love things, soap and stuff like that is just my thing. So I bought the, the sampler and I think I used vanilla this time. It's wonderful. It smells really good. And it's it you, you soak it in it 
and it really is intense. It's nice when it's drying. It really smells, but it's not bad. It's not too intense. Um, you can smell. It's like it's like a hint of it. So she, I don't know what she does, but she does it well. So Tuft, I think Tuft Woolens is is her Etsy shop. And like I said, I bought the sampler because I thought, you know, I can try every one. I think I might just stick with lavender. So if I buy more from her, I'll just buy lavender. Um, but the other ones are yummy too. But here we are. I have finally, and it's still a little bit damp. That's why I don't have it um, twisted up yet. But I Navajo plied this this morning. It is 100% Polworth, as I said. And it's called Flaumenbaum, which is plum tree. One of my favorite colors of hers. It is greens, two colors of green, two shades of green, and purple for the plums. So you've got green for the tree, and purple is so pretty. Look at that. Look at those colors. I don't know if you can see those colors. And this is just my tie. Wait a minute, maybe I'll show you where I'm my tie. And I'm not the most even spinner. I Navajo plied it. I'm not saying. I love it. It is what it is. The yarn does what it wants. Sometimes it's a little thicker, sometimes it's a little thinner, but it's therapeutic. And I'm not quite sure. I think I might just do a shawl, just do a a shawl until I'm done with the yarn because I want to use every inch of it. And what did I say? 350 meters, I believe, I have of this. But it fluffed up. It is so squishy and soft. Normally when I Navajo ply anything, it's it gets hot, it gets I over I guess I overply it. And this one I guess I didn't because it's super soft and squishy. I'm just amazed by it. It's so nice. So that's what I've been working on. That's my my latest. Mm. So that was spinning. So I actually have gotten a little bit of spinning done. Yay! So that's that. And yeah, I'm pretty much sure. Yeah, oh, what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my window, window to my soul, from Hohi Locatelli, which I like Joji. We call her Joji because it's a little bit easier to say. Um, but she is a great designer, wonderful designer. Um, I pretty much want to make everything she does. Uh, I think a lot of people feel that way with her stuff. Uh, this is one of my favorite sweaters now. It has turned into, this summer I wore it tons um, I'm wearing it now, as you can see, and I don't know if I showed it to you last week. I made the buttons. I made them with Fimo. I took the purple that matched the yarn and white, and I mixed it together a little bit, and then I mixed it again with the purple, and then I kind of tried to get them to be, um, let's see if you can see. It's a first try. I don't know if it's, anyway, um, I love them. I think I used one and a half inch, uh, centimeter, inch, centimeter cookie cutter to make the buttons. And I think I'm going to be making Fimo buttons from now on. Uh, yeah, I love it. I use skein. And I thought I used drop top drawer sock, but I think I used a different one. I think it was tagged incorrectly. I'm not sure. Um, I have to look and see, but it's super soft. And the colors are just amazing. Skein does a fabulous job. At, her colors are just amazing. So, um, I have two things from her, my Still Light and this, and I just love them. So, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to. Uh, yeah, if you want to know, yes, that is a gravestone <laughs> that you're looking at in the back corner of my, my lot. Um, it is turned around. It is just a big stone. Um, my husband's grandparents died. And here in Germany, you rent a a lot, and uh, for a certain amount of years. And once that time is over, you, they I don't know what they do, but they they've taken the stone off, and uh, asked us what we wanted with it. And it's the prettiest stone. It's just a regular old stone in the shape of it's not, you know, it's just a really really pretty natural stone. And they and his father asked him if we wanted to keep it. And I said, yeah, I think it's a gorgeous, I love stones. I said, yeah, over here, bring it over. So we now have that in the backyard. We've turned it around so it doesn't look like a gravestone, but in, at Halloween it's cool. <laughs> um, I love it. I think it's neat. It's just a little something his, from his grandparents that's in our backyard. So um, one more thing. Oh, yeah, stitch markers. I told you last week I wanted to talk to you a little bit about stitch markers. I, um, yeah, stitch markers. If... <laughs> 
some people, I hear a lot of people talking about them. Yeah, they've got danglies. I don't like the danglies. Um, there's a, this is just my take on it. Um, because I use them all the time. And I use all different kinds. As you saw, I use the close, the, the closable ones for holding on to the stitch marker. And um, I use dangly. Here's one from Nicole. Wait a minute, I'll show you a here, here's an orange one that you'll see a little bit better. It's an angel. She made me female angel stitch markers. And if you can see, there's a little wire at the top. Okay? And this is a little bit bigger. And then, um, for example, I made this one. This is a little Starbucks coffee stitch marker with the same wire at the top. I had a Fimo. I made that one. Um, so they're a little bit bigger. And then I also made... I'm just listening. Oh, okay. Oh, it scared me. I thought it was the mole underneath the deck. Definitely sounded like it. <sighs> My heart. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, and then I have been making these little stitch markers. And can you see? And they're just little rings with a bead on the end. And these are great too. A lot of people say they don't like the big dangly ones. They'd rather have these. And other people say they like the big dangly ones because these are, for me, I like them both. I think they each have their own place. When I am knitting something that has a yarn over right after a stitch marker, these little ones can flip underneath. And I find these to be much, much better. They have something to hold them, to, to hold them before or after the yarn over, so I think these are much, much better. Um, whereas in, if I'm just knitting a sock and I want it to have the beginning of the row and it's in between two knit stitches, sometimes, and a sock is little, I think these are better for that. So there's always kind of a place, a time and a place for each one. And I also have stitch markers, for example, this one. This one doesn't really work all that great just because it's too big but I love it. It's my bike stitch marker that I bought on Dewanda. Dewanda is an Etsy shop for Germans. In Germany, I mean. Dewanda D-E. And I bought this from So Schön, I think her name is. Um, she's got really cute little stitch markers. And it has a little lobster clasp on it, which is quite nice. And it's a bike. This is the only one I can't really use well because it's so big and it gets stuck on stuff, but I think it's cute. Um, but her other ones like this, let me see if I can find one. Um, with the, oh, here. I bought this one at Leipzig. This is one with a little lobster clasp. Right there, and it's a watermelon, female watermelon. Ah, with beads. It's really cute. This one, if I, for example, my sword that I designed, I like to know which is the front and the back because it is garter stitch with an I-cord edge. And the, the increases were always on the front. So I like to have this, I clipped it onto the front of the design so that I could always see what the front was. And that's what I think these lobster clasps are great for. So these are really good too for that kind of thing. If you always want to mark the front of your project, when I started my blanket, I, I used one of these to mark the front so I knew when to do the decreases because you always do it on the front row. Now I don't need that because I have enough blocks that you see, but these are also really, really good. So that's just a little bit about stitch markers and why some stitch markers are better than other stitch markers and why it's good to have a whole bunch of different ones. And sometimes it's good to have the kind... I find these not to be the best because they fall off for me. But these are another one that you can use just to kind of mark maybe every 10 stitches or 10, you know, if you want to mark them really quickly and you can take them right off. I don't know that you can see. They're little clips that go on. You can use a you can use a paper clip, whatever you have, this kind of thing, because you can take it right off then. Um, those are good to mark where you're knitting. Um, yeah, I'm going to open a thread. Let me know what you think about stitch markers. What are your ideas on stitch markers? Do you have any comments or advice or anything for the rest of us? I would love to hear it and um, see what you have to say. And I hope I didn't forget anything on that. But I, I just kind of want to talk a little bit about it because I hear so many people talking about stitch markers and, uh, 
you know, ah, they're not good and these are not good and they're too big and everything else. I think every stitch marker has a place and um, I'm kind of a fan. I collect those as well with my yarn and bags and fiber. It's bad. So that's about it. And I hope you enjoyed my, my yard <laughs> and my stone in the back. It's Halloween, people. It's coming. I'm not a big fall person. I love the flowers in the spring. I'm a spring, summer person. So I just have to deal. And my only way to deal is knowing that Halloween is coming. And I love Halloween. And then I love Christmas and Thanksgiving. We, we're big on those. So those keep me happy. <laughs> Anyway, I'm really, really glad you came by. Thanks so much. And um, yeah, let me know if you want to hear anything. If you want to say anything, please stop by the Ravelry group. Leave me a message. Thank you all of you who have already. That made me feel really, really good hearing from you all. Um, yeah, and I'm going to keep trying every two weeks to sit in my yard and talk to you about what's going on and anything you want to hear. And hopefully we'll, we'll try to do another field trip out and about and take you around. Um, just to see what it's like here in Germany a little bit. But now you can see my backyard, and this is my favorite place to be. So until next week, or in two weeks, I will see you then. Keep knitting, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.